WIO terminal. WIO stands for uh, wireless input and output, isn't it? Yeah. Hey everyone, this is Wire Terminal. What is Wire Terminal? This is the latest board offered by Seed Studio. They've been kind enough to send me one of these so I could talk more about it. Wire stands for wireless input output, and this is a complete system that uh, sports over 300 different boards, sensors, and devices. It's quite impressive, and as you can see from this small packaging, it's quite polished as well. Unlike other development boards like ESP32, uh, Wire Terminal aims at people that are just getting started with IoT. This is a complete system that contains lots of features and sports two groove connectors to expand the functionality without even touching a soldering iron. On board you will find some D51 microchip capable of boosting up to 200 MHz. Alongside for Wi-Fi connectivity, there is also Realtek RTL8720 series uh, chip for 2.4 and 5G Wi-Fi support, which is great, because 5G support isn't present on many of the uh, development boards. Apart from 2.4-inch LCD screen that takes most of the space, you'll also find two groove controllers for solderless interactivity with other groove devices. There is a 40-pin compatible GPIO header, bunch of programmable buttons, SD card slots, couple of sensors, and OTG USB Type-C port for power and serial control. To top up the list of the features, there's Bluetooth, a microphone and buzzer, five-way joystick, light and infrared sensor, and even tiny magnets to hold this case onto magnetic surfaces, which is great. Wire Terminal is a perfect learning platform because it's a part of bigger ecosystem supporting lots of different devices. Now, apart from extensive range of different uh, dev boards and sensors, there is also a list of supported languages that you can use to actually program this thing. It's compatible with Arduino IDE or Visual Studio Code, and you can also write your scripts in MicroPython or CircuitPython, which leaves you with lots of different options to program this thing. On top of that, guys at Seed Studio took their time to produce nice and quality wiki page for this device. If you're just getting started, there are enough samples and explanations to actually teach you how to use specific functions of the device and how to interact with other devices. On top of that, there is a couple of practical demos that you can try for yourself. My favorite demos were to use the screen to display the data from the gyro as a chart, or connect a wire terminal to Raspberry Pi via USB to display basic information about your server. Or lastly, and perhaps not the most glamorous topic to talk about, display the latest information from COVID-19 server. It's probably the most depressing project you can probably load on the wire terminal right now, so I took upon myself to modify it and make it a little bit more optimistic and cheerful. So stick around and I'll show you how to modify this project to display YouTube statistics for any given channel. That should be fun and it should get you started in how easy it is actually to make a functional device with wire terminal. So let's get started. To get started, go to Google Cloud Platform and navigate to library and search for YouTube. In YouTube, you want to enable YouTube Data API v3. Now, once you've got that enabled, just go back to the dashboard in the API and services, go to credentials and create, uh, create a new API key. That's the key you're going to use for connectivity. Now, I'll assume that everything is uh, downloaded for COVID-19 project and it's working for you. And we're going to use this code uh, to modify it and to make it work with YouTube. So first, we have to actually start a new sketch and go and install supporting libraries. Now go to include library, manage library and search for two libraries. First of all is uh, Arduino JSON. Install this Arduino JSON library and search for another one, which is YouTube API. Install YouTube API and that will give you a sketch that we're going to base our um, program on. So navigate to examples then YouTube API, ESP32 and channel statistics. 
Now that we have all the libraries, let's take a look at the code itself. First of all, I've created a credential system, which is going to take the information from Wi-Fi and API key and the channel ID to make it work. Now you see that in that sample sketch from the channel statistics, we're going to need this. Instead of um, having this in a simple, um, in the same code, I've offloaded to a separate file and then I just add include line to make it work with my sketch. Now that I have this, I've submitted the password SSID, SSID and password and the values for it along the script using just values uh, defined in here. So for channel ID, I submit channel ID, etc, etc. Now another look uh, at the script, you'll notice that uh, this sketch is quite simple actually what it does. It uses this function to obtain the details and produce the details in a serial uh, monitor. Those details are stored as a JSON uh, using Arduino JSON library and they quite easy to actually access. So I'm going to use this uh, as a main key in my uh, get data function. So in a get data function you'll notice that I actually obtain that information in here like I would in this sketch and then I store this information in three different variables for total subscribers, views and videos because those are the values I'm interested in. For the most part, everything I want to display remains the same. I've tweaked the LCD display slightly to change the colors, to modify the text like um, the not enough tech for the title and obviously subscribers videos and total views for the labels that are uh, um, being displayed next to the numbers because channel statistics is actually using esp32 libraries to connect i've not used any of the wi-fi libraries to connect from this sketch i actually just replaced them with a COVID 19 to achieve that um, connection now, there is a lot of reporting to a serial monitor, so I've simply replaced that in a void setup with posts to actual screen. So I could see what SSID I'm connecting to, when I'm connected, and then when I'm downloading the information from the server. The loop remains the same. In the loop, I'm only monitoring the one of the buttons and making sure that the button wasn't pressed. If the button is pressed, I'm simply refreshing the data uh, obtained from YouTube server. As you can see, that was quite simple and all I had to do, other than small modifications, is copy and paste the script from one to another to make a, a workable solution for actually getting information from my YouTube channel, which is pretty impressive. And this shows you how easy you can get something done uh, thanks to Arduino libraries and Wire Terminal. You can get Wire Terminal for less than 30 bucks on Seed Studio. That's actually not that expensive considering how featured packed this uh, development kit is. Now, if you're interested, in the description of this video, you're gonna find a link to uh, this particular device from Seed Studio. As for now, I'll be definitely playing a little bit more because I want to refresh my knowledge on Python using MicroPython and maybe try it out with a platform IO, which seems to be go-to development environment on Windows right now. If you're interested in any of that, it's a good idea to follow me on social media because you're gonna get instant notification whenever a video or article is out. And as for now guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.